Here's why you should never bump your hips in the golf swing, because it hurts. <laughs> it, literally, that hurts. Welcome back out to beautiful Superstition Mountain. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about the hip bump. It's something I've heard a lot about in my life as a golfer, and something that I really don't see the best players doing exactly how I've heard this described. So we're going to start from a dress. At a dress, I like to see the hips centered between the feet. I don't really like to see the hips bumped off to one side or the other. I don't want to see the right hip getting too much lower than the left or vice versa. I like to see the, our pelvis nice and centered. And when that is, it, it makes it so I can set up with my pressure pretty much centered at a dress. And I can feel where it's at. If I bump my hips like this, I really, I don't know where I'm at now. I'm, I'm, my upper body's over here and my lower body's over there. My pressure seems like it's pretty balanced, but I can't feel it. First off, preference is to have the hips between the feet, centered. Next, in our back swings, I really prefer not to see too much hip bump to the trail side in the back swing. Is there a little bit of a shift? Yes. However, my preference would be to have both the upper and the lower shifting kind of together, or the upper shifting slightly more than the lower. I would generally don't prefer to see the lower shifting out from under the upper. There are a few players that are really good that do that, but generally not my preference. So, if we've made a nice turn, now do we want to hip bump in transition? My preference would be no there again. Just doing that hurt my, my hip and my low back, not even with no force under it, just going slow like this literally hurts. So I'm not a huge fan of seeing the lower half sliding out from under the upper half. I want to see the, the shift so we can shift our downshift board back to the front with both the upper and the lower parts of our body shifting together. I don't want to see the lower sliding out from under the upper. So both are shifting together so I can land to my left foot. And now we can turn through and keep our centers a little bit more stacked up, takes the pressure off the back. So we've covered the three main hip bumps I see, address, backswing, and transition or downswing. Now we've set up a little station here to show how I can turn a little bit more centered or as some players in the past have said, turn in a barrel Though it might not be exactly what happens, there is some shifting in the golf swing. The feeling of turning more in a barrel can be very beneficial. What I would like to see from you, in the early parts of our backswing, we're, or before the backswing even starts, we're going to have a little trigger. So there's going to be just a sm small little shift to the lead foot, and then a shift to the trail foot. And you can see it's just a small shift. And now I'm pretty much done, now I'm going to wind. And you can see I never got out and ran my, my hips into that stick. So I turn before I really run into that stick. And then I can land. And now I want to unturn before I really ram myself into this stick. And so my belt buckle might get over and touch that stick in the follow through. But I really don't want my hip going that direction. So now on a quick side note, for the entirety of this video I've been standing on this downshift board which I find to be a really good tool to help students learn how to shift their pressure without letting their mass wander too far in either direction with bumps or sways of the body. So I can actually create small shifts and naturally the winding will help me shift back. So we'll put a link in the description of this video so you can get your downshift board. Okay so we've We've discussed pretty in depth what we do not want to see. Let's, let's give you a little bit of a picture of what we do want to do. So we talked about how we really don't want a lot of this linear motion. What we do want is more of this back motion and back motion. So instead of bumping to the right, I'm gonna shift into the right, but then I'm gonna use this to wind this right hip back out of the way. And then we're going to flex a little bit, and then we're going to use that force that we, when we flex, we land into our left foot. We're going to use that force to now push the left hip out of the way. 
That creates space, keeps us in our inclines, and takes a lot of pressure off of our back from the, the lateral motion. So now I'm gonna hit a couple shots, just demonstrating how I can create proper shifts and create enough depth without a lot of lateral motion or linear motion. So let's see how we do. And when I'm on the downshift board, especially on grass, I don't typically like to hit them full out. That shot right there was 60%, and that was about the limit of how hard I can go at it without feeling like I'm gonna spin the board. So now let's see one of these from face on. So what you'll notice is I started with the, the left side down and I kind of went into the left and then rocked into the right and then put the left down as I started to transition. Another thing you'll notice is I didn't bump my hip like this to get started to the left or at a dress. Hopefully you liked this video. If you did, hit the like and subscribe button. Come visit us at mitolinesgolf.com where we can teach you to swing like an athlete and take the things out of your swing that could be hurting you.